Today we're going to learn how I make these nerdy graduation cards. First, I select a circuit board that is nice and fresh. Then I slide it into a jig that holds it nice and tight. I scoop up some solder paste and smush it onto a metal stencil. Then I use a squeegee to push the solder paste through the holes in the stencil. The holes line up with the metal pads on the circuit board, and solder paste is tiny balls of solder suspended in goo, which holds the components onto the circuit board. I use this organizer to keep all the parts nice and tidy. I start off with a red LED. This will function as a power indicator. Next, a resistor which limits the current to the LED, preventing it from burning out. Now the battery holder. It has pieces that touch the top and the bottom of the battery in order to provide the power. Then the power switch. It routes the power from the battery to the rest of the circuit board. This is a type of speaker known as a piezo buzzer. It will play the music by converting a signal into sound waves. Next, two 100 ohm current limiting resistors. The first will protect the speaker and the second protects an LED. This is the brains of the operation known as a microcontroller. It's like a tiny computer that tells everything what to do. Next is a yellow LED for the graduation cap and finally a button for user input. After all of the components are on the circuit board, it's time to bake it in this toaster oven for six minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. The oven melts the solder paste allowing for the components to stick to the board. If you'd like to get one of these cards for your nerdy friends or family, check out the description for a link to my Etsy shop. After the oven, there is one more piece to add and it's the display. The four pins on the display go through these holes on the circuit board, and I designed this 3D printed piece to hold the display while I solder the pins from the back. Each person may have different techniques for soldering. Mine is to touch one side of the pin with the soldering iron, and to touch the other side with the solder, which melts when heated up. Now it's time to program the card, and I designed this jig to do the trick. These six small holes in the graduation card are called the in-circuit serial programming port. They line up with these springy things called pogo pins on the jig. The pogo pins will transfer the code to the circuit board. I place the graduation card into the jig and lower the clamp. The code is transferred from my computer using software called Arduino, which brings the circuit board to life. To finish assembly, I need to attach the graduation tassel. I use this blue wire to pull the 2022 charm onto the tassel, and then I loop the tassel through the hole in the card. And now we can test it out. First, I insert a coin cell battery and turn on the power. It plays the graduation song known as Pomp and Circumstance and displays Happy Graduation, Michael. This one has been personalized, but here's what it looks like without the personalization. After the song, the user is asked to test the successometer by holding down the button. Keep holding until success is detected. After the successometer, a final message is displayed. This one's been personalized, and here's what it looks like without the personalization. There's a secret video game that is revealed after the final screen. What should I name it? I was inspired by the Chrome Dinosaur game, and this one features a student jumping over little books. The game can also be activated by holding down the button while turning on the power. Should I name it Skipping School? Getting Over School? Let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments. On the back, you can write the graduate's name and date. Let me know if you have any questions, and happy graduation everyone! I wish you much success in your future!